Aloha, my name is Todd, and I'm gonna walk you through setting up your own personal Wi-Fi in the BYU Hawaii residences using this Amplify Home Router. Don't worry if you're not an expert with computers, I'll walk you through it, and once we get everything connected and the app downloaded, the whole process takes about two minutes. Let's get started. Inside the box, you'll find the Amplify Home Router and the power cable. Additionally, you should have an ethernet cable for connecting this to the wall. First, let's connect the ethernet. Locate the ethernet jack in your apartment. It will be on the wall somewhere, maybe under a desk or near the corner. Plug one end of the ethernet cable into this jack. You'll feel it click when it's in tight. Connect the other end to the back of this Wi-Fi router in the blue port with the little earth symbol above it. Next, plug in the power adapter to an outlet in the wall. Connect the other end to the power slot on the back of this device. You should see it light up. It'll display Amplify on the front as it starts up. The rest of the setup process will be done on your mobile phone. Start by going to the Google Play Store or Apple App Store. You'll need to search for the Amplify Wi-Fi app. When the app opens, you'll see this landing page. Click Continue. We want to set up a new Amplify mesh system the top option. Next, it gives us instructions on how to connect the cables, which we've already done, so we're gonna go ahead and skip this part. Here we see a list of devices to be configured. If your neighbors are setting theirs up at the same time, you may see more than one here. You wanna be sure to pick the one that corresponds to your device. This is where we name our Wi-Fi. Pick a name that will help you identify your wireless network, but please keep in mind that honor code standards do apply. For this example, I'm going to choose My Home Wi-Fi. You're welcome to choose your own. Also, we give it a password necessary to connect. For this example, I'm going to use Super Secret 99. Please choose something that isn't easily guessable and that only you will know. Super Secret 99. This password isn't just to connect to the Wi-Fi, you'll also need it to reconfigure your settings if you need to do so later. Once you've entered these two settings, click the OK button to and continue. The app will now transfer all these settings to the device, and you should see it register when it's done. A clock will show up on the device, and as it goes through and completes its setup, it should set it to the correct time. It takes a few minutes for all of the settings to transfer and for the box to be updated. As it's doing this, it will choose appropriate channels and make sure the Wi-Fi is set up and give you the best overall experience. Your phone may also switch back and forth. It'll give you the option to configure remote management. You can set this up later, but for now, let's skip. We can also skip rating the app. Here's our status page for the Wi-Fi. You can see My Home Wi-Fi is the name of our network and it's up and running right now. However, there are two specific settings we need to change to make this work in our BYU Hawaii environment. Let me walk you through those. First, we need to make a change so that you can access BYU Hawaii internal websites. Until we make this change, sites like Canvas, Workday, and other internal sites won't be accessible from your Wi-Fi network. Don't worry, it's an easy thing to fix. In order to do this, we need the router IP address of the device itself. This will be different for each device. And there are two IP addresses stored on the device, one for the WAN and one for the router. We need the router IP address. It's easy to get by touching the touch screen on the front of the device and cycling through a few informational screens like this.
one of the IP addresses will be the WAN IP. This is not the one we need. Make sure the one that we see says router IP at the top. This will be different for each device. In this example, it's 192.168.163.1. Write this down and we'll need this in just a second. For this next part, we'll need to switch back to our mobile device, except instead of using the Amplify Setup app, we're going to use an internet browser for this. First, make sure that you're connected to the Wi-Fi you just set up. We're going to do so and check and make sure we're connected to My Home Wi-Fi, which was the network name we gave it during setup. Yours will be whichever you named it. Next, open up a browser and type in the IP address of the router IP that we got just a second ago. For this example, it was 192.168.163.1. Yours will be whatever your router's address is. This will now load a web page on the device itself that lets us get into some special configuration. Click Amplify Instant Router, showing My Home Wi-Fi, and then there's one option for Bypass DNS Cache. Make sure this box is checked and say, yes, I want to continue. At the bottom is a save and continue button. Click this to write this to the device and you should update. Now that step's taken care of. The second change we need to make is to adjust the channel width from auto to specify 20 megahertz. This will make your experience and your neighbor's experience much better. We're gonna go back to the Amplify app on your mobile device. To do this, click on your home Wi-Fi, and then you'll want to go to wireless, and then scroll all the way to the bottom and click advanced. Ensure that the 2.4 gigahertz channel is set to auto. This will allow it to change channels to find the optimal signal, and ensure that the channel bandwidth is set to 20 megahertz. For 5 gigahertz, ensure that it's set to auto as well, and change that option to 20 megahertz as well. When this is done, Click OK and proceed. Your router will need to reboot. And when it comes back up, it should be ready to work. If you get a message saying that it's unable to locate your device, this is OK. We just told the router to reboot. It will come back up momentarily. Now that the router is configured and Wi-Fi is working, let's talk about placement of this device within your apartment. Here is a typical BYU Hawaii apartment layout. In this example, the Ethernet jack is located in the corner of the apartment. Yours will probably be in a similar location. While you could place the device close to this Ethernet jack, let's look at how that impacts your Wi-Fi coverage. This shaded area represents how well the Wi-Fi signal spreads through your apartment. With the router situated in the corner of the apartment, about two-thirds of the signal is being transmitted into the neighbor's apartment and out of the front wall of the unit. That's not very good. If you can relocate this device to a central location within your apartment, you can get much better coverage. Look at how much more we cover the apartment just by moving the device a few feet across the room. This will help greatly in extending Wi-Fi coverage into back bedrooms. To help with this, you should have received a long ethernet cable for the device. Please avoid running the cable across doorways or where it will likely get walked on. We don't wanna create a tripping hazard or damage the cable. You may need to try a few different options and see what gives you the best results in your specific situation. The same thing applies to the four or six person hallways. Locate the router in a central location, like on the kitchen table. These are powerful enough that they should cover all the way back to the back bedrooms. Lastly, please note that the antennas inside this device are oriented so that you get the best coverage if the device sits flat on its feet. Mounting it sideways on a wall will drastically reduce the coverage area of this device. Now, everything should be up and working on Wi-Fi. But what if you need to connect a wired device? Fortunately, these routers have one wired port in the back. You can use this to connect a TV, a desktop computer, or even your laptop if it has a port. But what if you need more than one wired device connected? To do this, you'll need to purchase an additional wired Ethernet switch. You can check the bookstore, Best Buy, or even order one from Amazon you'll want to purchase a gigabit ethernet switch. They often come in four, five, or eight port models, depending on how many connections you need to make. When you have the device, the connection is easy. You'll need an ethernet cable to go from the LAN port on your router 
to any switch port on the wired switch. It shouldn't matter which one you use. Simply connect this and then lights will light up either on the back or in this case, a light lights up on the front telling us that port eight is in use. Now you're free to connect all your other devices. This could be your TV, your printer, whatever else you have. Sometimes your configuration may get messed up or you forget the password and don't know how to get back in and set it up. If this ever happens, don't worry. There's a simple step to erase everything and start all over. On the bottom of the device is a reset button. Simply take a sharp object like a safety pin and hold it in the bottom in this button for 20 seconds. The screen should say rebooting and count another 10 seconds after the screen goes off. When you release and it boots back up, it will reset to factory default settings and you can follow this video again to get it set back up and working. It may take two or three minutes until it's ready to set up again. That wraps it up for the setup. Hopefully everything went really well for you. However, if you do happen to have any problems or any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We want to hear from you and want to make sure everything's working well for you. Take care.